Yo, what's up guys? Uh, it's Noah here. I know, finally did it, finally got a face cam. Um, I've been making these YouTube videos, these DFS videos for like three years. Finally decided to show myself to show you guys who I am. Uh, so my videos are going to be a lot different from now on. Obviously I'm going to have a face cam now. I'm also going to go back to the old format that I used to do my videos where I pull up DraftKings and Yahoo and just go position by position, talk about some players that I like each, uh, each position. And as we go, I'll build out a core of five plays. Figured this was the best way to do my videos now, uh, since I do have a face cam. Probably wouldn't make much sense to do them with the slideshow that I had been doing before. Uh, so we're going to be going back to the old format with the videos, uh, where I go through DraftKings and Yahoo. Uh, we'll build out a core of five plays. These are my first looks at the slate, so I'll just talk about who I see at each position that I like, uh, and then we'll build out that core. Um, before we do get started with the video, I want to let you guys know, I forget to say this in all my videos, but you guys can follow me on Twitter at DFS by Noah. I am, I am pretty active on Twitter. Um, you guys can follow me over there. I did post like a while back on October 22nd. This was when I like officially showed who I was. Uh, this is an old picture of me from like three years ago. So you guys can probably tell the difference. This was when I was like probably 16 or 17 years old. Now I'm 20. Uh, I'll be 21 in like three or four months. Uh, so I'll probably look a little bit different. Probably look like I'm homeless compared to this guy. I mean, this guy's got a clean face. No hair on his face, nice haircut. Me, needed haircut, I got hair on my face. So uh, yeah, I'm living on my own now, so uh, things are a little bit different for me. But I did make this post, you guys can screenshot, or pause the video, you can screenshot it, you can read it, you can go to my Twitter and read it uh, if you want to. Uh, but I would definitely appreciate if you guys would follow me on Twitter, very active over there, at DFS by Noah. Also would appreciate if you would drop a like on the video. Make sure to subscribe if you have not already. Uh, like I said, follow me on Twitter, and let's go ahead and take a look at this four-game slate for Thursday. Um, so starting off at point guard, the two guys that are going to catch everybody's eye at the top are obviously Kimball Walker and Damian Lillard. Uh, you're going to hear people talk about this a lot today, but Kimball Walker in a revenge game, going back to Charlotte to face uh, his former team. Kimball was with the Hornets, I'm pretty sure, since he got drafted. He's been with that team uh, since then, so this is obviously a pretty big revenge spot for Kimba. Just kind of like a sad uh, sad spot for him, honestly, going back to the team that he played for for so long. I do expect Kimba to play very well. I mean, he's been playing very well just as of late. Just like the last five games, he's got over 40 DraftKings points in every game. One thing I noticed, though, is DraftKings did adjust his price for this. I mean, he was 8,500 in his last game against Cleveland, went for 46 DraftKings points, which is 86 or 8,500. That's just kind of an average score. DraftKings bumped him up to 9,300. I don't know if that's because of the revenge game, if that's because it's just a four-game slate, but DraftKings definitely factored in the revenge game. Over on Yahoo, though, you do have Kimba for a little bit cheaper than Lillard, $4 cheaper, and I think Kimba's actually probably going to be a guy that I look to a lot on Yahoo. I don't mind plugging him, uh, plugging him in the Yahoo core for now. I think he's definitely a guy I'll be targeting over there since he's cheaper than Lillard. You could obviously look to Damian Lillard, but I do really like Kimba here. It is going to be very tough to get him in on DraftKings, though. Because we are kind of la uh, lacking value on this slate. There's not a lot of great value that I see. Plus, Kawhi Leonard is $300 more than Kimba. And I think I'd rather just play Kawhi Leonard once we get to small forward. We'll talk more about him. Uh, Kawhi's just doing so much for the Clippers right now. So at point guard, I'm probably not going to be able to pay up at much of this position. It's going to be hard to get Kimba, Lillard, Walker in there if I'm trying to get in Kawhi at small forward. So just looking to some of these mid-range options, I mean... I think a guy like Chris Paul is definitely in play at 6,500. Chris Paul's, I mean, he hasn't shown much of a ceiling this year. His biggest game this season was 40 DraftKings points. We've seen SGA really take over uh, this offense. SGA's had some really big games this season. I imagine that's how it's probably going to be most of the season. Uh, but at 6,500, Chris Paul, I mean, he can get you 38 to 40 DraftKings points. I, I would definitely play him over Deontay Murray, who's only playing like 24 minutes a game. Lou Will, don't know if I want to play Lou Will here, especially with Kawhi coming back or at least expect to come back. Hasn't been confirmed yet, but with Kawhi not playing on Wednesday and the Clippers on a back-to-back, -back, it seems very likely he's going to play today. Looks like the um, Clippers are going to rest him on every back-to-back -back this season. Uh, so I definitely like going to um, Chris Paul over some of those guys. Just looking at that uh, price range, Chris Paul is the guy that I really like there. Uh, Devontae Graham, I feel like, is going to carry a lot of ownership today. 6100 his price did get bumped up. He had a big game last game against the Pacers. 56 DraftKings points. That game did go to overtime. Uh, one thing I want to uh, show you guys, if you go over to Popcorn Machine, if you just look at the fourth quarter, every starter or every guy that started the fourth quarter ended the fourth quarter. 
So Terry Rozier did not uh, get, get subbed out of the game in the fourth quarter. Miles Bridges, Devontae Graham, Cody Martin, and Bismack Biombo. According, uh, according to Popcorn Machine, all, the, all five of these guys played the entire fourth quarter. They also played the entire overtime period as well. Uh, one thing that's been a bit concerning um, with we're going to talk about a guy that I like at shooting guard is he's kind of been losing minutes to Devontae Graham. Devontae Graham's just been so good. I mean, he's playing alongside Terry Rozier. If Terry Rozier is having an off night, Devontae Graham's most likely going to close the game out over him. So you could definitely look to Devontae Graham, but he's just going to be a guy that's uh, really inconsistent. I mean, you just don't know what you're going to get from him on a night-to-night basis. He had He's had big games this season, but coming off the bench, he's really going to only play like the high 30s in minutes if he's really hitting his shots or if Rozier is really struggling. So Graham's going to be pretty low-owned, I would imagine. I mean, I would hope he's low-owned. If people like flock to Graham because of his big game, I'd definitely look elsewhere. Uh, so maybe you could go to him for a low-owned play, but probably not something I will be doing. For cheap, I don't see much I like for cheap. I think maybe Dennis Schroeder, 5,300 is a guy you could look to. Schroeder's another one of those guys that's pretty inconsistent. You never really know what you're going to get from him on a nightly basis, but he is pretty cheap on DraftKings at 5,300. Patrick Beverly, I imagine, is going to have to play pretty big minutes here against Portland. They're going to need his defense on Dame and CJ, so maybe you could look to Patrick Beverly, obviously with Kawhi healthy and most likely playing this game. I mean, Beverly's going to take a backseat to Kawhi. He's not really going to do much offensively, but Garden Damian Lillard, there'll be a chance. Beverly can rack up a couple of defensive stats and maybe get you 25, 30 DraftKings points. So he'd be a fine play for cheap, but that's probably really all I'm looking at at the point guard position. Moving on to shooting guard, I think this is definitely a spot where we can pay up. One guy that really catches my uh, eye on DraftKings is Jimmy Butler. He's only 7,200 against the Suns. Uh, the Suns have actually been pretty solid this season, but they're not a team I expect to be like great defensively rest of season. I did tweet out a while back, like after the Suns had gotten off to that great start, I did say that the Suns will make the playoffs this season. I did say that was going to be a hot take I was going to give out. I think I'm going to stick with that too. I mean, the Suns, they're going to be a much better team than they were last season. I think they're probably one of the more improved teams this league, or this season so far. Not sure if they're going to be like a great defensive team like they have been so far. I mean, they've been solid defensively, but I really like Jimmy Butler at 7,200 on DraftKings. His price dropped a lot off the, what he was his last game. He only went for 33 DraftKings points in a tough matchup against a slow-paced Denver team. Uh, he was 8,100 on that slate. Now he's down to 7,200 today against the Suns. So I'm for sure going to have Jimmy Butler in my DraftKings core. Definitely going to be a guy I look to uh, quite a bit today. If I'm only making one lineup, he probably makes that one lineup if I can find the, uh, find the value to fit him in. This feels like a slate, though, where I'm for sure going to be prioritizing paying up for Kawhi. Uh, but other shooting guards, I mean, we got a lot of the guys I've talked about. SGA at 7,100, it's pretty close between him and Butler. I think I prefer Butler right now, but I mean, we talked about it back at point guard. SGA is just doing everything for this Oklahoma City Thunder team. He's playing 36 minutes a night. He's chucking up a ton of shots. Uh, he's been outperforming Chris Paul pretty much every game this season. Definitely a guy you could look to. I think I'd slightly prefer Butler. Plus, it's a tough matchup for SGA. Spurs have been solid defensively this year. Uh, Deontay Murray, whether he guards SGA or Paul, I mean, Deontay Murray is one of the best defenders in the league, in my opinion. Uh, so I don't know if I'll be playing SGA a ton today. I think I'd slightly prefer uh, Jimmy Butler over him. But just looking at other shooting guards, I mean, Tyler Harrow, it's so hard to trust him. He's just such a like high-risk, high-reward player. You just never know what you're going get, to uh, get from him. He's one of those guys that if he's not making his a lot of shots, I mean, he's not going to provide you much value because he doesn't really chip in with the assists and rebounds. He's had a seven-rebound game, an eight-rebound game, but usually if uh, Hero's not making like six or seven threes, you're not really going to get a big game from him. So it's hard to trust him even at 5,500. Probably would just play Schroeder over him for a little bit cheaper. Kendrick Nunn was off to a really good start, but he's really started to struggle just the last few games. Did have a 35-point game in there, but he's another guy that's going to be hard to trust, especially playing alongside Jimmy Butler. We know Jimmy Butler's going to be the number one priority for this Heat team. Uh, so that's probably it for shooting guard, I think, for just the guys that really stand out to me. So let's go ahead and move on to small forward. Uh, so at the top, I definitely want to talk about Kawhi. Um, so I am recording this video on Wednesday night at 11 a.m. or 11 p.m. late Wednesday night. Kawhi did not play on Wednesday. This is a back-to-back. -back. I imagine they just sat him Wednesday so he could play today. He's not going to rest two games in a row, so I'm expecting Kawhi to play, and he's definitely my favorite stud on this slate. Uh, on Yahoo, or on DraftKings, he's 9600 On Yahoo, he's at $48. I think he's the top option over there as well. 
I do want to show you guys um, the Clippers' usage so far this season. That's pretty crazy, the numbers that they have. Just looking at Kawhi's numbers, at least. Uh, once it gets to, or once I get it to load, I'll show you guys. So just far, so far this season, in a 200 or 182 minute sample size, Kawhi has a 41% usage rate with the Clippers. 1.74 fantasy points per minute is his average. I mean, that's like James Harden without Chris Paul kind of numbers. Harden was putting up those kind of numbers whenever Chris Paul would sit last season. Kawhi's just doing everything for this Clippers team. I don't expect anybody on the Portland side to be able to stop him. I mean, Mario Hazonia, Rodney Hood, those guys, they're not going to be able to stop Kawhi. He should be able to do whatever he wants here. Kawhi's usually not a guy I go out of my way to play because he doesn't give you much of a ceiling. But I think with this Clippers team, especially with Paul George still out, the ceiling's going to be there for Kawhi. It's a totally different situation than back when he was with Toronto. He's going get to get you probably 50 to 60 DraftKings points most nights. In a close competitive game against Portland, I really like Kawhi Leonard here. I think he's the top stud on the slate. Definitely a guy I'm trying to pay up for uh, on both sides. I do want to go back to shooting guard. I totally forgot to talk about one of my favorite values. Uh, mistake by me, but Dwayne Bacon, a guy that I really like on both sides today. 4,400 on DraftKings. Um, I imagine he's going to be maybe low owned today. It's hard to tell because there's not a ton of great value on this slate, so maybe people will flock to Bacon, but he only played 13 minutes in their last game against the Pacers. Negative 0.5 DraftKings points in 13 minutes. The guy's not that bad. I mean, he's a pretty good player. I'm a Florida State fan. Uh, you might can see it in my shirt right here. I got an FSU shirt on. There's an FSU clock behind me. I'm a big Florida State fan. Um, Dwayne Bacon played at Florida State. He was really good when he was with FSU. I think he's going to be a pretty talented player. I'm very high on him the rest of the season. This is a guy that has played pretty big minutes so far this season. I mean, he's got some games with 33, 37 minutes. He's definitely going to be inconsistent. Like, playing alongside Rozier and Graham, especially with how those guys have played so far this season, especially Devontae Graham. Bacon might be risky, but, I mean, at 4,400, you're not really taking much risk, especially on a slate with limited value. So I do like plugging Dwayne Bacon into the core on shoot, or on DraftKings. He's 4,400. You can play him at shooting guard or small forward. On Yahoo, he's $12. He's really cheap at the shooting guard position. He's probably my favorite value over there. Maybe Tyler Hero, I guess, if you want to upgrade to three do, the $3, you could do that, but... I think Dwayne Bacon at $12, going to be a guy I look to a lot for value. I totally forgot to uh, mention him back as shooting guard. But going back to small forward, obviously I really like Kawhi at the top. Guys like Jason Tatum, uh, DeMar DeRozan, Gordon Hayward. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get to these guys because I think I'd rather play Jimmy Butler over them, like in that price range. Gordon Hayward, another player that's coming off a really big game, 59 DraftKings points last game. I think he's going to take a slight hit with Jalen Brown expected to return for this game, so... I'll probably be avoiding Gordon Hayward, especially with his price up to 7300 now. Don't really think I'm going to be using him at small forward. Uh, Kelly Oubre, I was very high on the start of the season. I played him a lot at the beginning of the season. He's kind of cooled down since then. He had four straight games of at least 33 DraftKings points, and then just the last three games, 21, 24, and 24 DK points. I still think Oubre is going to be a guy that gets you 30 to 35 DK points most nights. Not the best matchup against the Heat, uh, but definitely you could target Oubre. I mean, the Heat are playing fast this season, but... There's a chance Oubre gets guarded by Butler. Uh, Jimmy Butler, very solid defensively. Uh, but yeah, I do like Oubre at 6K. Looking for value, there's not really much value that I see that I'm really in love with. Just at least looking the night before. Maybe you could take a shot on Rodney Hood. Uh, you never know what you're going to get from him. If he's making his shots, he's going to put up a big game. If he's not making his shots, he's going to dud. He's only 3,800 though. It's a four-game slate. I guess you're not taking much risk with Rodney Hood. Uh, but that's probably it for small forward. Let's go ahead and talk about power forward real quick. Uh, so at the top here, I mean, we've got a lot of guys we've already talked about. LaMarcus Aldridge, definitely someone I want to talk about. I really like him at 6,900. Definitely stands out here against this OKC team. Uh, Aldridge is someone I'm going to be high on rest of the season, especially while he's this cheap. He's going to be a guy that's in the upper 7 to 8, close to 8K price range most nights. Uh, Deontay Murray's been doing so much for this Oklahoma, or for this San Antonio team that's kind of taken away from, like, Aldridge and DeRozan, especially DeRozan. Like, DeRozan's assists are way down this season, mainly due to Deontay Murray. But Aldridge at 6,900, he's going to give you, or he's going to be able to return value on this price most nights. He was really hot in that Atlanta game. And then, like, in the fourth quarter, I think he had he had 33 DraftKings points at the beginning of the fourth quarter. I don't think he scored a single DK point the remaining or the remainder of the game. So you could have got a big game from Aldridge last game. I was pretty on, high on him that slate. I think Aldridge is a really good play again at 6,900. 
I'd probably play him like over Harrell and Gallinari and Ubre, just looking at power forward eligible players. Uh, but for value at this position, it's pretty thin. There's not much that I love. Myers Leonard was someone was someone that I actually liked last slate, and that really was a disappointment. Only played 18 minutes. I thought he would play a lot more against a big uh, against a big Denver front court. Only 11 DraftKings points here. I mean, it's a pretty good matchup against the Suns, but for 4,700, probably find better value on the slate. I mean, Leonard was playing really well just before that dud, but I, don't, I just don't know if you need to go there on this slate. There'll probably, hopefully, there'll be some value open up as the day goes on uh, on Thursday. But let's go ahead and move on to center real quick. There's a couple guys I want to talk about at this position. So at the top, you do have Bam Adebayo at 7K against the Suns. Who is a guy that you could definitely target? I mean, Bam's going to be someone that gives you 35 to 40 DraftKings points most nights. He's had two duds last, just the last two games, but a lot of that has been due to blowout. Only played 26 and 25 minutes. They got beat by, or they beat Houston by 29. They lost to Denver by 20. So blowouts have kind of cost out of bio the last two games. This game against the Suns should stay close. If I had to project out of bio for a certain amount of points, I'd probably say he scores like upper 30s, low 40s in fantasy points today. So at 7K, he's for sure in play, but I think I'd rather save and go to Hassan Whiteside. Uh, Whiteside's definitely going to be someone I'm looking to a lot today. He's 6,400 on DraftKings. He's pretty cheap on Yahoo as well. Uh, he's $25. He's only a dollar less than Adebayo. I think it's pretty close between Adebayo or Whiteside who to go with on Yahoo. Since it's a dollar difference, maybe Adebayo projects better, but for tournaments, Whiteside's probably going to come in a lot lower owned. Uh, and Whiteside's just a guy that I like a ton here against this Clippers team that has really no one to defend him. They're going to have a, a Zubak out there. They're going to have Montrez Hell out there, but Zubak is too slow to guard Whiteside. Harrell is way too small. Whiteside should, should just be able to bully both of those guys, especially on the boards. I feel like this is definitely a game where he could go for 20 and 10, put you or put up 40 DraftKings points like he did in the last game against the Warriors. We know Whiteside will block a ton of shots as well, so with Montrez Harrell driving on him, I mean, Whiteside should be able to block a lot of shots that Harrell is com- or with Harrell coming after him. So really like Whiteside at 6,400. Definitely someone I'm going to be looking to at that salary. Uh, and then another center I want to talk about, Aaron Baines at 5,800 um, at home against the Heat. I think Aaron Baines in a pretty good spot here. I, w- I would say the matchup's not great, but I mean, Baines is such a productive player. He's been so good with this Suns team so far this season. I want to pull up their court IQ real quick, just look at their usage. Uh, so let me go to the Suns real quick, scroll down. Because I know Baines is averaging like a pretty insane amount of fantasy points per minute, especially when I need to take DeAndre Ayton off the floor. Uh, so let me do that, take Ayton off the floor. His usage rate, I believe, is like just over 20%, but the fantasy points per minute are pretty high for Baines. Yeah, 20.1% usage rate, 1.29 fantasy points per minute. If you project him for 30 minutes, he probably projects for over 30 DraftKings points here. 5,800, you're not going to find a guy that probably projects for 6x, and I think Baines honestly does. Last three games, 59, 32, 38 DraftKings points. I mean, he's contributing in all categories, getting the points, getting the rebounds, getting the assists. He was three assists shy of a triple-double in that game against the Warriors, so Baines is a very solid play here. I like him on both sides. He's 5800 on DraftKings. He's really cheap on Yahoo. Uh, he's all the way down here at $15. He's definitely someone that I'm going to be targeting over there. Uh, but going back to DK, I think that's probably it for the center position, at least the guys that I wanted to talk about. Touched on Baines in that mid-range. Uh, you do have Cody Zeller in that mid-range, Steven Adams as well for 56 and 5400 but I think I would just rather play Baines uh, Zeller's minutes are a bit concerning just the last two games wasn't really foul trouble or anything he only had one foul against the Warriors didn't fa- have any fouls against the Pacers and only played 20 in 17 minutes which is pretty concerning he had been off to such a good start this season uh, with a or a boss facing a Boston team without Horford uh, with without Al Horford I mean you're gonna have either Tice or Williams out there not really good defenders so Zeller I'd say is in a good spot his minutes are just so inconsistent right now it's really hard to trust him Definitely would probably feel much safer just going to Aaron Baines. Uh, Tice is in a really good matchup against this, against this Charlotte team who's been getting killed by bigs this season. But at 5,600, again, I think I'd just rather go to Baines for just a little bit more. Uh, so honestly, that's probably it for center. If you need a cheap play here, I guess you could go to Myers Leonard. But I think that's going to do it for the center position, guys. And I think that's going to do it for the video. Hopefully you guys did enjoy this video. I do greatly, uh, greatly appreciate it. Hopefully you enjoy the face cam. I'm going to have face cams out on all my videos, uh, rest of the NBA season, all my NFL videos are going to have the face cam now. I feel like this will make my videos a lot more enjoyable to watch since you guys can see me uh, while I talk about some of the players. 
Uh, so like I said, hope you enjoyed. Drop a like, subscribe. If you haven't already, you can follow me on Twitter at DFS by Noah. I would greatly appreciate it. Uh, but thanks for watching, guys. Good luck tonight. We'll see you in the next video. Peace.